All right, let's continue the theme this morning because there has been such reaction to the uh, document we highlighted yesterday. A document commissioned, paid for and published by New Zealand On Air that basically gives instruction to New Zealand uh, news media organisations on how to comply with what they see as the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. A treaty which, according to New Zealand On Air, didn't involve the ceding of sovereignty by Māori. Um, a treaty that has created a systemically racist country that needs to be sorted out and a post-colonial country that is woeful and terrible and that is why Māori need to be treated specially in the way they are covered by mainstream media. Um, Māori who work in mainstream media need to get special breaks and special treatment and this is all to create more equity in our society. It is a remarkable document and those of you who have followed the link through on the platform site and read it have expressed the same outrage and, and dismay as I felt when I brought the story to you. Uh, amongst those outraged and dismayed is Muriel Newman, former ACT MP and, of course, uh, leader of the Centre for Political Research, which uh, writes and aggregates views and publishes views on issues uh, around uh, the treaty and, I guess, the way forward for New Zealand on matters of, and let's not beat around the books, matters of race. Uh, so Muriel Newman joins us uh, now. Muriel, welcome uh, to the platform. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Sean. How are you? Great. Thanks. Now, you guys had been aware of this document for a while, right? No, um, we were aware of the um, move of New Zealand on air, you know, into this whole area. I mean, the Public Interest Journalism Fund, of course, um, highlighted it. Um, but there was some base doc there was base documentation uh, that we found at the time the Public Interest Journalism Fund came about that indicated uh, there was a deep seated um, piece of work going on around um, Maori and the treaty and journalism and um, so it wasn't entirely a surprise but um, it was so radical the document <laughs> uh, that did catch me by surprise for yeah. sure. What do you think is so radical about it, Muriel? Well, you know, first of all, it, it indicates that, um, you know, Māori didn't um, sign the treaty. I mean... Well, you know, seed sovereignty, is, uh, I think, is the term they seed use. Seed sovereignty, sorry, seed sovereignty. And, um, and that is such a, a departure from, you know, the way that government agencies and governments have viewed all of this. And so the question needs to be put to... Um, our Prime Minister, whether that's her view as well and the view of her government. I mean, you know, if you've got a government agency um, putting out material along that line, is this now widespread? I mean, are we going through a, a, a new phase in New Zealand's history? Well, it's, I think this... I don't think this document would be seen as controversial in most bureaucracies in Wellington and most government departments. This is the new normal, the thinking in here. It may not be normal, I don't know, in Tapuki or in Ekatahuna or in Gore or in Winton, but in Wellington, this sort of woke liberalism is very much flavour of the month, Muriel. You know, it's so worrying what's happening um, in this area because... What's going on now is a total rewriting of New Zealand's history and, of course, a total shaping of New Zealand's future in a direction that, you know, no New Zealanders, well, the majority of New Zealanders, number one, didn't anticipate, and number two, uh, probably don't agree with it all. And, of course, um, I was interested in the fact that the document refers to he purpur, uh, which, um, and the UN know, Declaration on the Right of Indigenous People, that is all wrapped up in it, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's, it's sort of like that uh, radical document that, you know, was discovered uh, just after the election um, that um, had been produced a year before the election and secretly uh, kept, uh, you know, away from New Zealand First, the coalition partner, 
um, and certainly wasn't spoken about during the election campaign, that is now underpinning so much government policy. And, you know, it's leading to this uh, co-governance, as we know. And you have to conclude, Sean, that, you know, New Zealand itself is being co-governed. And, in fact, that seems to be the way, you know, the Labour caucus is operating as well. It's, it's just um, such a, 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 well, a separatist move. It's radical. It's something that New Zealanders weren't aware of. We, there is no mandate for any of this. It's a shocking state of affairs. I think you made a really good and, and telling point there, Muriel. Um, we haven't... We need a debate on co-governance because we haven't had one. And in reality, in many areas of the bureaucracy and elsewhere, we have co-governance already. It, it's a debate that the government or the, the elites didn't want to have. They just implemented it. And most New Zealanders are now scrambling to catch up, aren't they? Yes, they are. And um, I do notice there is an expression in that um, document um, that talks about normalising Maori authority as one of the goals and yeah. um and it sort of it seemed to me that you know the thing that isn't said about co-governance is that it is maori rule <laughs> if you have 50 percent of the decision making made by maori it means the other 50 percent can't overturn it and so whatever they want is what happens and you know so and that was the um, that was the objective, wasn't it, of Hipuapua? It was Maori rule by 2040. Well, for goodness' sake, we seem yeah. to be having it by. Well, this document says this document <laughs> says that there need to be two forms of government in New Zealand, and because they didn't cede, cede sovereign, sovereignty, Maori should not have allegiance to our parliament. Oh God, I, I, you know. In your worst nightmare, you wouldn't have imagined we'd have got to this point. So the question is, you know, what are the consequences of this? This is what bothers me. You know, how many of the mainstream media are going to be alerting the public to what's going on? Where is the fourth estate? You know, you guys are it, but where's everyone else? And and this is the problem, isn't it? That What's happened in the last um, couple of years is we've all realised the hugely important role of the media in a democracy, you know, to hold power to account, to be a watchdog for the public. You know, we relied on that. And I don't think we even realised how important it was until suddenly the Public Interest Journalism Fund came along and that was a taste of what this document's all about. Mm. And suddenly you realise that you haven't got that crucial pillar of democracy anymore. And so it makes you really, really worried about the future. Yeah. Muriel, do you think, and I know you guys do good work, I read a lot of it, we publish a lot of the stuff or republish a lot of the stuff that you guys publish. But you've been an MP, you've been in Parliament. Do you think you can have an influence doing what you're doing right now? Or is the boat sailed? Is this battle over? Should we give up? No, no, we shouldn't give up. You know, you, you don't give up. This is the big thing. You can get discouraged, but you have to pick yourself up and have another go. Because you've got to remember with all of this that the majority of New Zealanders are horrified by what's going on. The problem is so many of them still aren't aware of it. And that is the real battle that we have. It's ensuring that by election time, Kiwis understand, you know, what the real crucial uh, issues are that we're fighting for in this next election. And in my view, if, the, uh, if these people who are putting through all of this uh, Maori sovereignty, Maori supremacy, um, policy areas, if they get another three years to embed it in even further, then even if you get a change in government, you know, after that, um, it will be very, very difficult to change. And so the whole future of New Zealand, I think, will be radically altered, probably permanently. And that is the real deep worry as we face the election later on this year. David Seymour... Um 
seemed uh, to suggest to me that some of the stuff is going to have to be rolled back. He believes we need to have a uh, a, a, a referendum on, on, on co-governments. I know that Winston Peterson tends going very, very hard on, on these issues. But we see the National Party, uh, I think, be reluctant to engage uh, on this, try to chart a very, very bland middle course or middle ground on these issues. Does that disappoint you? Look, it's it's worrying because there's no signal to tell us exactly, you know, how far they intend to roll things back. I mean, we we have uh, their commitment to um, repealing three waters, and I'm pretty sure they intend to uh, repeal the Maori Health Authority, which um, of course has brought co-governance into the health system. And so on a couple of specifics, they have been uh, clear, but on the other stuff, they haven't. And of course, this is really widespread and rampant throughout the whole public sector, as you've alluded to. And so, you know, the charitable opinion is that they're keeping their powder dry until closer to the election. I mean, you know, if you're honest, um, Sean, if you look back at um, Judith Collins uh, when he purpur uh, was first brought into the you know public arena and everyone became aware of it, she did try to oppose it. Oh, she wasn't wrong. She system. wasn't wrong. She may have been ahead of her time. That's right. But she was crucified by, by the media. By, guess who? <laughs> by, by the <laughs> media who were taking yes. the money... From the government. I know it was shocking, absolutely shocking. And, you know, National presumably have learnt from that and realised that, you know, on these um, woke issues, uh, they're probably better just to um, play a middle road until uh, at a time where the election comes along and there's so much going on. So you don't get that long period of crucifixion that we, yeah. we saw with poor old Judith because yeah. that was just horrible. Yeah. Now, interesting. I'll just let you know, we, of course, published on our pages a link to this document, which is provided clearly by New Zealand On Air. My understanding is that link has now been taken down by New Zealand On Air. Um, so we're going to have to take pictures of the thing and then post it online anyway. We'll make sure people can still read it. But we will check so are that. You saying that. Are you saying that the document is now no longer available online on the internet for, from the from the link that we had yeah yeah so maybe that we have a cheese really interesting but that's the independent document that new zealand on air didn't want to talk about yesterday the minister no politician no government person has wanted to talk about which seems to me too to be uh pretty telling um that they're running for cover on this stuff now listen does this make you think that the media should receive no government funding. Is where this, you know, ends up Look, by going because. <laughs> well, we don't uh, any funding apart from our, our generous backers and our subscribers, and we're in the process of doing that. It's a hard business, but it is a business, uh, Muriel. Uh, I think if there is funding got to be doled out, you've got to have a better mechanism than New Zealand on air whose board is clearly woke. There are people who are clearly political operatives in there. Um, I think you've got to have a more transparent and less politicised um, distribution of that money. But to be honest, I think in my previous films, I don't think the government should subsidise news media, no. I think news mm. media should rely on its audience and the new model is that it is subscribers and the people that listen who dip into their pockets, who will keep new media organisations like ours running, um, and that's the new model. So, no, I'd say I don't think there should be any government funding, or if there is, it's got to be so crystal clear what it's for and what it's not for, um, that the public can have complete confidence. But, but you couldn't at the moment, could you? No, and at the moment it seems that, you know, it's just a, an, another arm of government, isn't it, that yeah. is reaching out into the community with all these different media 
platforms and programs and everything else, and it's all indoctrination. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that is really scary because, you know, we've read George Orwell's 1984. You know, we've seen what's happened in, in um, you know, dictatorships around the world over the years, and it's all horrifying. And here we are, little old New Zealand, we're heading totally in that direction. And it's, um, you know, and part of it is this media reach that's going on that isn't telling the truth. It isn't telling, giving a balance um, to the issues of the day. It's, um, I noticed in the document, um, you know, the, the way uh, media report on Maori is, got to get better you know we're not allowed to have any negative stories and you know it just is totally corrupting the whole basis of what the media and balance you know is meant to be all about it's a shocking thing i hear you i hear you muriel absolutely can i just let you know too we have found another link to the official site to the pdf site that is working so i'm going to clear this up with the technical people uh, after I finish at 10 o'clock this morning, but you can and we'll publish that link as soon as we can. Muriel, thank you very much indeed uh, for, for joining us. I guess you'd be justified in some ways in saying I told you so. Um, <laughs> which doesn't make <laughs> you, you feel any better. You don't want to say that. Yeah. No, exactly. Thank you very much, Sean, and thanks for bringing it to our attention. Anytime. That is Muriel Newman. She's the head of the Centre for Political Research which writes good articles and looks at things that mainstream media won't. There's a reason mainstream media won't do that. They've been bought off from the government.